Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Let's start out with this video of Barack Obama talking about encrypted devices and cryptocurrencies, and then uh, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin. Uh, before smartphones were invented, uh, and to this day, if there is probable cause to think that you have abducted a child or that you are engaging in a terrorist plot or you are guilty of some serious crime, uh, law enforcement can appear before your, at your doorstep and say, uh, I, we have a warrant to search your home and they can go into your bedroom and into your bedroom doors and rifle through your uh, underwear uh, to see if there's any evidence of wrongdoing. And the, the question we now have to ask is if technologically it is possible to make an impenetrable device or system where the encryption is so strong that there's no key, there's no door at all, then how do we apprehend the child pornographer, how do we solve uh, a, or disrupt a terrorist plot? What mechanisms do we have available uh, to even do simple things like tax enforcement? Because if in fact you can't crack that at all, government can't get in, then everybody's walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket. All right? So, so there has to be some concession to the need to be able to get into that information. Some so there you go. Um, I think it's very interesting that China has just come out. And let me point out here that uh, if you remember when China first started cracking down on Bitcoin, I think it was... Um, it was around when the volume on OKCoin OK basically went to nothing. Let's pull it out here and see. So this is back in, at the beginning of the year. You can see this about January of this year. China amounted to, I believe it was 90% of Bitcoin trading up to that point. It, it's in this article we'll read here. But... Um, I said at the time, and a lot of people said, well, China's just trying to make sure it's safe. China's just trying to do this. Well, no, China's trying to ban cryptocurrencies. There's no question. China doesn't want there to be cryptocurrencies operating in their country. They don't want their citizens to be able to get their wealth out of the country. And cryptocurrencies offer the best way to do that at the lowest price. Um, so I was right and everyone else was wrong because there were a lot of people saying that um, and so here we have come to a place now where it appears I mean a person with reasonable analytical skills could come to the conclusion that clearly Jamie Dimon and the Chinese Communists and Barack Obama all work for the same team and they're all against Bitcoin how much does it matter doesn't really matter very much because when i first started covering bitcoin in 2011 i mentioned the fact that it was an idea whose time has come now it doesn't matter what kind of forces you marshal against an idea whose time has come there's nothing they can do to stop it they can delay it they can divert it they can do all kinds of things and everything that you can possibly imagine and even more has been done but they're not stopping it and uh, we'll see that in the chart here but let's read the story here China's three largest Bitcoin exchanges will all stop offering local trading well that didn't take long yesterday China's longest running Bitcoin exchange BTC China announced it will suspend its local trading service at the end of this month and today the country's two other major exchanges Huobi and OKCoin OK followed suit to say they will cease at the end of October. 
The writing was on the wall when the Wall Street Journal reported on Monday that the Chinese government intended to shut down Bitcoin exchanges after banning ICOs the previous week. Government officials then began meeting with exchanges this week to bring about the trading suspensions, a source with knowledge of discussions told TechCrunch. While the exchanges will no longer be allowed to facilitate the buying of crypto coins using Chinese yuan and the trading of coins, they will continue to operate international facing exchanges and other associated services. Smaller exchanges, however, will be closing for good. Those include Yunbi, which announced in Chinese it will sh- shut up shop on September 20th. The impact of the crackdown sent Bitcoin prices falling, with the cryptocurrency dropping below 3000 on some exchanges for the first time in a month, but it quickly rebounded and at the end at the time of writing it nearly made up the losses as with all things bitcoin it's difficult to be ex- sure exactly why but there are plenty of reasons most importantly china is no longer the dominant player in bit in bitcoin trader it once was a series of government bans most recently a four month trading freeze due to security concerns right have seen its share of global trading drop from more than 90% in previous years to just over 10% today. Markets like Japan, Korea, and the U.S. have emerged to account for a lion's share of global trading volumes, so the impact of this China ban is not as severe as it initially may seem. Now, we know that if we're talking about uh, crooks and shysters like Goldman Sachs that they talk the opposite of their book. So anytime, like for example, Goldman just recently said you need to buy gold. So it's probably a good time to sell it because these gr- groups and players always do the opposite. They're always, if they're trying to get the public to buy, that's because they're selling to the public. If they're trying to get the public to sell, that's because they're buying from the public. So what does it mean that JP, uh, JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon comes out and with his ranting against Bitcoin and the next day the Chinese outlaw the buying and selling of Bitcoin in their country? Um, one might wonder whether or not the Chinese have just been tricked here. And it's quite possible that Diamond is actually doing and planning to do the exact opposite. And the Chinese just shot themselves in the foot. That very well could be the case. That they were duped. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see if that's the case. Now, over to the price action. I want to take you to TradingView.com because... This is a site that I found that's covering cryptos now. Very, very uh, good charts so if you just click on cryptocurrencies you can see you've got indices stocks etc and then you've got bitcoin here it's obviously going to be the most popular chart and then you can see these are all the bitcoin markets so you really don't want to try to go there through that way if you just want to see bitcoin us dollar um there's a much faster way to do that if you just go back to When you're highlighting markets and you highlight cryptocurrencies, you'll see over here Bitcoin dollar. Bitcoin dollar, Ethereum dollar. And so we'll pull up the Bitcoin dollar chart and then you go to interactive chart. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that the technical pattern on the chart seemed to indicate that 3000 was going to be support and that we would probably get a bounce off that. So let's come into the one hour chart and you can see that's exactly where we got that bounce. You can see we hit just under 3000 and we're now at 3788. So big bounce percentage wise. This bounce is actually giving me pause that it happened so rapidly. You can see on this chart, it's not like this bounce. It's just immediate. Uh, Is the correction over with? That I don't know. We have to wait and see. I personally bought a little bit of Ethereum. I was actually going to buy some Litecoin this morning. I woke up and Litecoin was in the low 30s and I just didn't pull the trigger. It was a big mistake. Uh, You can see if we go over to Bitcoin Wisdom. um, 
you can't go to this LTC USD chart because that's going over to BTC dash E, but you can find a Bitfinex chart here, Litecoin US dollar. So you can see that that was this morning here, um, significant bounce back. I, I'm kind of bummed out that I missed it, but uh, you can't win them all. So the equivalent 3000 Bitcoin price was a very good buy point so far. The big question is going to be, how does it take care of itself? Uh, right now, we seem to be forming up a rising flag, a rising pennant. It looks like it wants to break up here into new highs uh, as far as this, this little bounce here. It looks like it wants to get above 4,000. We'll see what happens. But uh, So the impact of the Chinese move has been very, very short-lived. And the reason why I predicted that 3,000 drop to that 3,000 price is simply that that was what was in the technical pattern. That was the technical picture. That was also what I was seeing here on the MACD. So you can see now on the MACD on the 6-hour, we've definitely got a bounce. We get down to the 12-hour, you can see the bounce is forming. Again, that's lower, much lower than when we went down to 1,800. And you can see on the one day chart that we're just crossing through the zero point. So that's one that gives you pause. Uh, sometimes when we have these, uh, if you have a, if we're having a major decline, and I think I have to pull off all the way to get it. Well, you can't really see it. But uh, back here, when we had the major decline from the initial run to over a thousand, I think we ran to twelve something. Uh, you can see that you you do get some violent swings on the way down, but the trend is down. That may be what we're looking at here. We may just be in a very, very violent bounce. Then again, uh, we may be in one of these, and actually the selling is already over. You can see that that correction that we had went down to about uh, let's see that that went 1869 so it didn't come close to this one but uh, once it went down there back to that old low that it had here that's 1779 it just took off and ran all the way to 5000 so it's also possible this can just take off and run all the way to 10,000 from here we just don't know looking at this pattern based on past experience I would expect especially if we look at this MACD here I would expect that it's a pretty good chance that a top is in for a significant amount of time. Uh, I don't know how long that is. Um, if we go back to the trading view charts, it's kind of interesting that you can pull up uh, the entire view here. Let's put Bitcoin on the monthly and pull out the entire view so we'll go to interactive chart uh, one thing irritating about this it opens new windows every time we'll go to interactive chart and do the monthly so you can see here we actually get just about the whole thing um, we get back to 2011, we get information all the way back to three bucks on Bitcoin. And we can really see that run up. And uh, it did have an initial bounce. You can't really see it in the candlesticks. Uh, but this this red candlestick that followed on that is looking a lot like this red candlestick here. And uh, the way those corrections go after you get that uh, sell-off top, then the way that it corrects, you can see it took a long time. We had all of 2014, all of 2015, all of 2016, and it wasn't until 2017 that we broke on through and went up higher. That's possible. Do I think it's going to be a three-year period? I don't think so. 
but it is possible that you could have uh, a top at 5,000 and another couple years before we get back to it. That is a possibility. You always have to keep that in mind. So overall, so far, the impact of this Chinese news is not very uh, significant, considering that we're back up to 3,800 and the market was already rolling over around 5,000. It looks like they timed this news to coincide with the market rolling over. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Now, silver is uh, still just really boring. Uh, we're sitting here under $18, $17.63. You can see it's dribbling off. This is the latest from Silver Doctors. Silver chart is scarier than the scariest horror movie SD Friday wrap. The silver chart has taken the script from a horror movie that makes it look like any other circus clown. I guess that's a reference to this new It movie or something. There's good news on the week, but it ain't silver. The silver chart on the weekly has taken a page from the scariest of horror movies. We know what's behind the door. We know what fate brings us, and it gives that chart there. When silver finishes making a run on the weekly, bad things happen. Said differently, get ready for the cartel to bring the hammer down on Sunday. So, We'll keep an eye on silver. Uh, they give a lot of information here, but really at this point, until silver gets through 1850 is going to be the first step, and then through $22, there's really nothing going on with silver except just keep stacking. Uh, I hope some people stack some silver when we had nearly $5,000 Bitcoin price, um, but we may get that opportunity again. Like I said, I bought some ethereum uh if you look at the percentage returns here it looks like okay so bitcoin is now up uh 16 in usdt ethereum is up 14.5 litecoin's up 17.89 so they're all tracking very very similar to each other you can see if we go to four hour here here's the ethereum chart so big big volume spike right there uh, significant correction in Ethereum, considering that we were over, uh, we were into the 400s, and uh, we corrected all the way down below 200. So that's a good 50% price correction since the beginning of September. Yeah, these are these are wild markets. Litecoin even wilder. You can see Litecoin got almost up to 100 dollars. The high on that was 93.66, and the low on this was 32.98 that's almost a 66 percent bear market in two weeks so yeah cryptocurrencies are still wild uh it's the wild wild west but you can see from trotting out barack obama and by the way talk about specious arguments um of course they're going to talk about child molesters and terrorists to associate uh bitcoin of course, um, did we have any child molesters and terrorists before 2009, before Bitcoin was invented? Did we have any money laundering before 2009, before Bitcoin was invented? No, none of those things existed before Bitcoin. So it's just everyone knows this is a ridiculous smear. Um, and again, if you're talking about, you know, it's kind of interesting that Barack Obama uh, is so interested in law enforcement going through your underwear drawer. I can't really understand how going through someone's underwear drawer is going to prove that they're involved in a terrorist plot or child molestation for that matter. Uh, maybe the authorities should spend more time rather than looking for kitty porn hidden somewhere in someone's house. Maybe they should concentrate jailing and executing child molesters and the people who are making this garbage. Uh, but no, that's that's not what they're interested in. They're really interested in invading people's privacy and controlling money. And unfortunately for them, mathematics, cryptography, is making it a lot more difficult for them to track what everyone does, what everyone owns, where everyone lives, who everyone is. And uh, Bitcoin and cryptography have kind of threw a monkey wrench in the works of these totalitarians. And again, as I said before, 
Jamie Dimon, Barack Obama, and the Chinese communists apparently all work for the same people. And those people do not want you to have your own Swiss bank account where you only know how much money you have, only you know where you've transferred that money to, and only you control it. They don't want you to have that. Of course, these politicians all have their own Swiss bank accounts, and uh, they're probably all pedophiles, and they're probably behind all the terrorism and money laundering as well. But they certainly don't want you to have the ability to protect your finances. Well, unfortunately for them, uh, mathematics has made it possible. And like I said, cryptocurrencies are an idea whose time has come. It doesn't matter how many of these uh, people, uh, shills, trolls, whatever they are, that they trot out here and try to uh, dissuade people from using cryptocurrencies and cryptography. Um, it's not going to work. And uh, I think that's pretty clear looking at the current price chart. And we'll talk to you next time.